What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am building a brand new computer. It's a custom water-cooled build and it's actually the second one that I've ever put together, apart from old hotline back there. Um, the reason why I'm building this system is really just kind of for fun, I guess. Uh, it's a showpiece. It's not really meant to be super functional. I'm not gonna be using it on a daily basis or anything like that. It's not replacing hotline. Um, no one's really gonna be using it all that much. It seems like kind of a waste at first. Uh, however, I'm really just doing this also to kind of get my feet wet a little bit more when it comes to custom water-cooled builds. Uh, this is the only other system that I've ever built that uh, features liquid cooling so I really don't do this at all and I would like to get more experience with it it's really fun I really enjoy putting together hotline so I'm looking forward to this build as well um, but uh, that being said it is a little bit different than hotline it's small form factor we're, we're going mini ITX this time around so we're dealing with a lot less space but hopefully gonna pack a bunch of power in it just the same um, and uh, yeah we've got a ton of stuff to go over here guys so I'm just gonna go really really quick down the line and um, I'll put links in the description to all this stuff so you can check out more info if you want. Uh, but starting off with uh, the water cooling stuff, we've got a bunch of stuff from EK. Huge shout out to those guys for helping provide all this awesome hardware. Ah, see what I did there? Uh, we've got the EK Coolstream PE 240 millimeter radiator. We've also got the XE240. So these are both 240 millimeter rads, except uh, this one's slightly thicker than this one. We're gonna see if th these can both fit inside of our case. We'll get around to that though. We've also got some PETG tubing from EK. So we're doing uh, some hard lining. Not sure if we're gonna get around to that, uh, doing all the bends today, but we'll see how far we get. We've also got two uh, separate reservoirs here. We've got the Res X3 and the X3 Lite. These are both 150 millimeters. Uh, both same size, however, they have different uh, inlet and outlet configurations. So I, I kind of just got both to see which one would work better for uh, our loop. We've also got uh, some stuff for the GTX 1080. Uh, if you couldn't tell, we were using the 1080 for our graphics card, very sexy. Uh, we've got a backplate for that, as well as the water block itself, both from EK. Tons of fittings, just all kinds of fittings for, for the hard tubing. Just look at all these fittings. This there's a lot of freaking fittings. Uh, we've also got a uh, pump. We've got the pump from EK, the X-Top Revo D5 PWM. So this is a lot bigger than I thought it would be, and we're gonna talk about this more, exactly how we're gonna fit that in. Uh, we've also got uh, an EK Supremacy Evo water block. So this is the nickel plated, uh, the plexi one, so you can see through it, where you can see all the coolant flowing through. It's, it's really nice. We've also got some, uh, some aqua tuning fluids. Can't forget coolant. Now, I did originally think that this was gonna be a slightly different color. This is the crystal blue, and it's UV. Uh, UV is cool. I I'm hoping to hoping to get some cool UV action with this build. However, I didn't think it was going to be this color. I thought it was going to be closer to like a light blue, like like this uh, SATA cable here. But it's more of a, at least in the bottle, it looks like it's just more of a regular kind of deep blue. I was kind of go. I wanted a bit of a lighter blue. And uh, just a color calamity here because I've also got these awesome cables from Cable Mod. You can see my 24 pin extension here. However, the blue in this is slightly different than the blue on the SATA cable. And I, I like the blue on the SATA cable a lot more. So I don't know, this, this is kind of like a baby blue. I'm not sure if uh, I just picked the wrong color or, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. Moving on, like I said, we've got uh, UV action going on with the uh, reactant coolant. So I've got a UV LED strip from Cable Mod. This is their uh, magnetic 60 centimeter option. GTX 1080 Founders Edition. This is the only Founders Edition card I have, so I'm a little bit sad and I was a bit apprehensive at first to disassemble it for uh, water cooling because that means I won't have access to a Founders Edition card anymore unless I buy one myself, which is gonna be an arm and a leg, um, but Screw it. I've got I've got enough 1080s over there. I, I don't care if they're not Founders Editions. Founders Founders Edition is stupid. No, I'm just kidding. It's a, it's a very good reference cooler. Uh, EVGA has provided the uh, the power supply. That's what this is. 750 watts through 750 GQ modular, semi modular, I should say. It's also got uh, black sleeved cables. Like I said, we are going to be using the cable mod extensions with them to uh, cover up or just to add some more color to the build. We've also got some SSDs from OCZ. These are the Tryon 150s. I've got two of them. They're both 480 gigs. Uh, now, I, it would be ill-advised to run these in RAID 0 and install uh, Windows on it because that's, you know, it's, it's, it's risky. It's risky. One, goes, one drive goes down, the whole thing goes down. So uh, I'm going to keep them separated for now. We're not going to RAID them just yet. But like I said, this is more of a showpiece, and I think these uh, SSDs are really going to match aesthetically, like perfectly with the rest of our system. So that's kind of why I got them, especially with the, uh, the Manta case here. We've got the NZXT Manta Mini ITX chassis in white. Uh, this thing is also really good for water cooling, for custom water cooling. It's got, it's got uh, plenty of radiator support and things like that. So really excited to be building it. I've done a review on this case, but uh, never really done a full liquid cooled system in it, obviously. Um, we've also got a 6700K, really good CPU, Skylake, and uh, we've got a motherboard. We've got a motherboard, a Z170 Stinger from EVGA. This is one of the only color neutral Z170 boards out there. For some reason, manufacturers don't like to make mini ITX 
uh, I should say mini ITX color neutral Z170 boards. Kind of a must have to go with something that's color neutral that's not gonna clash with anything else. It doesn't have an M.2 slot on it, unfortunately, but like I said, you've got plenty of SSD storage there, so it's not too bad. Uh, that should be fun. And then last but not least, we've got this, uh, this kit of memory. I was, I, for so long I've been looking for a scenario where this, this memory makes sense. This is the Raiden series from Avexor. This is the one that has like the plasma tubing, LED lighting effects on it and looks all crazy and it's just over the top ridiculous. I finally found a system that this would, that this is hopefully gonna look great in. So, um, and hopefully there's no clearance issues because these heat spreaders are freaking massive. Uh, but those are all the parts. I'm kind of amazed that I got through all that in such little time. Uh, but I really just wanna get into building this thing, starting with, I think we'll start with uh, actually taking off the Founders Edition cooler here and slapping on that water block because reasons. So let's do that now. So this is how far I've gotten today, and I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. However, there have been uh, a number of challenges and obstacles and just things that just flat out didn't work. Um, and I'm slowly, quickly learning that uh, with custom water-cooled builds, nothing really ever goes according to plan 100% of the time, and it's just about how you solve it. It's just one problem-solving task after the next. So um, first off, uh, you can see I'm not using the cable mod cables right now because I just didn't like the way they looked. The uh, the color, the co the light blue color was just not matching um, with the, uh, the the blue accents on the RAM and SSDs in particular. So I'm just going with some white ones for now. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep these white or maybe switch it up uh, and add some more colors in there. Maybe maybe find the right shade of blue. I don't know. Let, let me know, let me know what you guys think. I think the white could work, but uh, I don't know. I feel like it can go either way. So. Leave me some feedback in the comments. Uh, obviously the 24 pin ATX is kind of hidden by the reservoir. Speaking of which, the reservoir is dangerously close to that GPU block. GPU block, by the way, went on very easily. Uh, but you can see that there's just like, look, look at that. It's like, what the hell, what's going on? It's like touching the left side, but the right side's perfectly hovering above it. Um, but uh, I don't know, it also looks just kind of weird. I don't know if this looks weird or if it looks cool. And I think I'm gonna have to put 
some hardline tubing in and do the runs to really figure out if I like the way this is going. Because I don't know, I'm, I'm really bad at visualizing in my mind how something's gonna look in the end. I actually need to see it, I'm very visual like that. So, um, I don't know, it's kinda interesting. But uh, yeah, so, so, so that went in fine. Now remember, this is just a reservoir. So I have the pump, which is down there, which has, has not been mounted yet. I'm gonna, we're gonna get to that, we're gonna get to that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out is that I very well might switch out all these fittings, at least the, uh, the main fittings here for the hard tubing, uh, for some smaller ones. Because what I've realized, and uh, Brian from BPS Customs, uh, shout out to him for helping me with all this, by the way. Go ahead and follow him on Twitter. Uh, he does some really awesome work. Um, he uh, suggested to me, and I completely agree, that maybe going with some thinner tubing might work. Especially if I'm trying to hit these really tight right angles, like boom, you know, and like, and like boom, boom. Um, then that might actually be an issue if I've got some really thick tubing, which I kind of do. This is a 12, 12 by 16. I don't know if it's 12 by 16, but it's 12 millimeter inner diameter. 16 millimeter outer diameter. I might go with something like uh, like 1013, like something I did with Hotline, which is quite a bit thinner than this stuff. And it would be a little bit easier on the bends, I would imagine. So um, that might also change. Might have to buy some new fittings and stuff, but that's not too big of a deal. Uh, also the fan, I swapped out the NZXT case fan, the stock one for this Corsair Airflow, the AF120. I don't know if it's if I'm keeping it. it. It may or may not stay, depending. I was thinking maybe I could spray paint the, uh, the, the gray corners here, the, the rubber rubber corners um, with blue, kind of that shade of blue, might look kind of nice, or use a blue ring and spray paint the uh, the corners white. I don't know, which one do you like? Which one do you like better? Let me know. Another thing that I wanted to point out was that you can see right here, there's only one radiator in this case. What the hell's up with that? Yo, I thought you had two radiators, Kyle. What the, you lied to me? No, I'm not lying to you. Uh, actually, the, uh, the, the, X, the XE240, which is over there, the really fat one, was supposed to go at the front. And then I realized that's not going to work because it doesn't leave any room in this little uh, basement door here for tubing, which I'm going to need to pass some tubing here for the pump down there. So that's not going to work. So then I have to move the uh, the PE, the slimmer radiator at the front here, which means I have no more room at the top here for any radiators. That one's too thick to go at the top. And as it turns out, this one was too thick to go at the top too. So even this one was too big for its initial purpose. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is buy another PE uh, EK radiator here, but just even slimmer. Maybe go down to like 25 millimeters. They've got some really good slim ones. Uh, and then put that at the top there. I didn't know what the hell to do with this pump because it's way bigger than uh, I initially thought. And I wasn't sure if I was actually gonna be able to fit it in here. And Brian had the amazing idea to try mounting it at the bottom of the case here in the, uh, sorry, the NZXT Manta's basement. So something like this. Um, unfortunately, the Manta doesn't have any native mounting holes for a pump which I really think it should. Maybe a Manta 2.0 should come included with that shit. Uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is probably drill some freaking holes. That's why I got my power tools over there. Got my drill bit box. Batteries all charged. You see that green light? That green light, you see that green light? That means we're ready for action, baby. I'm gonna drill four holes into the bottom of the case and uh, EK even and gives you this handy dandy sticker here, see? You put the sticker at the bottom of the case and you can drill, boom, 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 those four little X's, and that's uh, supposed to align perfectly with the screw holes on your pump. I don't have that much experience with power tools. I mean, obviously I hang shit on the wall and stuff with them, um, but uh, not, not so much modding. However, I feel like this isn't too different than maybe hanging a, a frame on the wall, but we'll see. Let's, let's get right into it and see how badly I messed this up. Installed. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Yep, that, that deserves some epic victory music right there. Uh, it actually went really smoothly. It's super stable. I tried moving it around, it's, it won't budge at all. So that's, that's perfect. Uh, like I said before, plenty of room for the power supply cables and uh, for the radiator, of course, at the front and just cable management in general. 
should have no problem tucking away all these uh, power supply cables. And here's a quick look at the bottom. I know I showed you guys a second ago, but here's just another look. Here are the four screws, one, two, three. The fourth one is actually hiding underneath this plastic foot here. I could have dremeled that part away, but it, it kind of fits over it just barely. You can kind of see how the plastic uh, of the foot just kind of goes up. It goes whoop, kind of like bows upward, whoop, and it goes up, or, up and around that fourth screw there. It's, it's a tight fit, but it's, uh, it's not impeding any kind of structural or integrity or anything like that. So um, I'm happy with how it turned out. Overall, I'm pretty excited. There's a lot still that I need to do, like I said, um, and, and hardware that I need to buy, the, the uh, top radiator being one, and uh, new fittings and new tubing and things like that. But that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave this video for now, guys. So let me know what you think of the progress so far. If you have any tips or suggestions or advice, anything like that, uh, or ideas, leave them down below in the comments. I'm gonna read all of them uh, because I know you guys have some good ideas. Uh, but that's all for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Have a great day, and I will see you all in the next video.